Okay. George McKeever might fancy it. No, he folds. He folds. He folds his cards. So we're looking at a two-player showdown. Marcel Lusk, a massive player in any country, anywhere in the world in poker, is all in on the European Poker Tour here in London. He shows his suited connectors their high cards, but they're not favourite against the pocket jacks. Of the, the fairly unknown John Faulkner from England, he might take a massive scalp. Lusk won't forget his name. He's not going to hit his flush. He needs to hit a king or a queen. And that's it for Marcel Lusk. The record has ended. We're down to seven. He had, he had to play cards, though. Bottom line, John, he had to play something. Yeah, well, yeah, he's, he's very, very, you know, he's the lowest stack on the table now. He's got king, queen suited. He's got to get involved. You know, he's got to get busy. He's just very unlucky, really, that uh, he got a big hand behind him. And, and also that he didn't hit a king or a queen. You know, it's great. He's saying goodbye to Noah, his, his, you know, his protege. Well, here's a song for you, Marcel. Na, 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 na. Yay, goodbye. Have you enjoyed yourself? Oh, yes, very much. You're going to go drown your sorrows now? No, not really. <laughs> I think I'm going to have uh, a drink and a song somewhere. A song. Go and do some karaoke somewhere. Yes. <laughs> You're an experienced player. Who's going to win? I hope Noah is going to win, the new, <laughs> the new kid on the block. But uh, John Shipley is quite a good player. But he might go and tilt when he lose a big pot. Then he goes wild. What more can you ask for, John Duffy, other than a drink and a song? Let's deal some more cards here to find a table. Down to seven players. Okay, so George has folded the ten jack. No folds. None of them obviously like their hands. A ten eight suited, a moderate hand. And Jeff Duval from England considers a bet. Doing okay, sitting about middle of the chip table at the moment. Okay, so Jeff has raised it to twenty thousand. He won't want to be re-raised in that hand. Let's see what he's up. At. Oh. He's going to be going into bed with a couple of ladies here if he goes with this. Pocket queens for Robert Cooper. And he's moved all in. Deval's going to fold it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's got jacks, he's got, that, yeah, he's got yeah. aces, you've got me. He's trying to pretend he's got the queens or the kings. <laughs> giving him a bit of a wind up. Uh, and that's a fold. Let's try and find out more about Robert Cooper. Mysterious player talks to us. Yeah, it's great to make the farm table. If you don't expect it, no point in entering. I'm not here for the prize money. I'm here for the tournament win. I'm not basically a gambler. You know, a tournament, you're in, you fee, you're in or out, that's it. So I enjoy the thrill of trying to win a tournament. There are some tough players out there, you know, some aggressive players, and you've got to read those right. If you don't read those right, they could be all over for you, as easy as anybody. It really amazes me when players say they're not here for the prize money. If that's the case, Mr. Cooper, give it to me. Now, you'll notice in the first few hands of a tournament that, you, that you, you very, sometimes you don't see flops, you don't see the community cards because yeah. players are re raising, raising, and re raising, and you'll, you'll quite often not see a flop. And this is, this, this is what's happening here. John Faulkner raises it. He's at this final table, in fact, at this tournament, thanks to a satellite tournament. And that hands out of this world. Pocket Jack's at the table with Noah Buchan. Ha! Oh, the John Shipley's got ace-king behind him. He doesn't know that. Um, oh, he's in all sorts of trouble. He's got ace-queen in front of him and ace-king and diamonds behind him. And this is where we see big money change hands. This is where the chips get put in the middle before any community cards. Wow, he's gone. All, he's moved all in. Oh, I mean, <clears throat> and John, Chip, look there, John Shipley. I mean, he's, he'll probably move all in as well here. So a big hand. Faulkner will probably Whoa. fancy his ace queen. Shipley's laid it down. He's actually passed the ace king suited, which is a very, very, very strong lay down at this stage of a game. Most players watching at home, if you're a keen player, uh, but not professional like these boys, you'll be wondering how you ever pass ace-king. But this is a situation where it was right, probably, to fold the hand. Well, it was. And also, Robert Cooper's folded his ace-queen, which is even less. And <coughs> Noah's asking for a bit of an applause there. I mean, it's difficult. You've got a raise and a re-raise in front of you, so you, 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 you quite easily throw away the ace-king of diamonds. Another hand without any community cards, and quite rightly so. They're, they're, they're top players at the top of the game here at the final table. 
Okay, so Jeff DeVal is on the button, and we've folded right round to Noah. John Shipley folds, back to Jeff. Oops, he's found pocket queens. A decent stack, but still he'll be happy with these cards. And he raises again at queen flop, and there's one of his other uh, queens with Bard Dahl from Norway. Uh-oh. What's he got? Oh, the queen, queen five. He's just making, he basically thinks that Jeff's stealing, um, you know, because he's on the button. So <clears throat> he thinks Jeff's stealing his blind, and it, see what Jeff, I would imagine Jeff goes all in. Yeah, here we go. In he goes. There's only two hands that can be beating him at this moment, and it's pretty, it's pretty unlikely that Dahl's got one of them. Well, a second aim like Dahl, he's been on a bit of a roll today, but there's no way he can call this. His luck would definitely have to be in. He's okay. unsuited. I mean, look at the percentage. I mean, Duval's 93% against 7%. It would be wrong to call it, but it would be fun if he called it and won the hand. <laughs> Let's see what he does. No chance. And that's pleased two people in the crowd here. Jeff Duval in, very strong hand on the button. He's got a good home support here. There'll be a few people in the crowd following him. Again, no community cards, and you might be sitting at home and thinking, this is very strange, Dan, but we're showing hands at the moment that, that this is where high-level poker can be played pre-flop, and you don't usually see that on the television. It's more a case of them playing very tight because of the prize money involved. You're playing for £200,000, €300,000 first prize. People want to get up in the, you know, up in the uh, positions, they, so they're playing cautiously. Okay, well I think things are going to loosen up as more and more players go out. We've already lost Marcel Lusk at this stage, and we're in the dirty old town of London for the second heat of the European Poker Tour. Stay tuned; it's going to be less cagey after the break. There's my main Ben, that can only mean London for the PokerStars.tv European Poker Tour, the Victoria Casino. Here's our chip count, still leading the way, John Shipley, and still sitting in second place, we got Robert Cooper, Jeff DeVal's third in the table so far, seven players left, and propping it up is lovely George McKeever. Back to the action at the table, more cards being dealt. At this stage, a, a lot of big pre-flop bets coming in, let's see what happens here. Yeah, that seems to be the case. We've got, uh, I think Robert Cooper is on the button, so John Shipley passes. Uh, Jeff picks up a deuce of jack, he folds that, dreadful hand. Uh, as to Dahl and Falconer, Cooper folds. Let's see what George has got on the small blind. We've seen one card's an ace. Seven twos? Yeah. Six twos? What's it going to be? Oh, I'll just put it on it. Yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was quite funny because Noah was goading him there. He was just saying, what have you got? Is it seven, seven? Oh, well, she picked up a pair of eights. I mean, I don't, I'm not sure whether he... I don't think he'd looked at his cards. I don't think he realised he had a, uh, a pair. Well, he was goading uh, him enough to, to maybe... He did have a sly glance and seen his pocket eight. And he'll go in his favourite if he calls this, which he does. Yeah, he's going to call. He's, he's, he can't not call at this stage of the tournament. George McKeever long in the tooth, hasn't really got the cards at the final table. He knows ace four may be the best he gets before his stack disappears thanks to the blinds. But Bo Ken is going to love eight eight. Marcel Lusk has taught him well. Let's see the flop. King, king, five. Bo Ken with two per at this stage. Nothing Seven yet. does nothing. One card left. No good. Only the ace would save George McKeever. And he's gone, John. He needed to get lucky very early on, George, and he played very strongly, and so he's, he's done all right, you know. He waves goodbye to this final table at the European Poker Tour, shakes a few hands, then disappears into the darkness. You got knocked out by someone young enough to be your son. Oh, I, have sons, <laughs> I have sons older than him. <laughs> Anyone yeah, there? Who do you think is going to win? I think Jeff is playing very well, and I think he probably, probably won, yeah. John Shipley is a very strong player. He's not playing many hands, but any hands he does play, he plays them very strong, and I think John has a great chance. So it's a toss-up between Jeff and John. The important thing is that I understood what George said. He's back in the easy jet to Northern Ireland, or indeed British Midland, or any of the other fine airlines that could give me free upgrades next time I fly back to Belfast. More cards being dealt here at the final table, and more folds, of course, play.